Hi, my name is Anson Dorrance. I'm the women's soccer coach at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I'm here with NSCA TV. I'm a longtime member of the NSCA. I joined it actually back in 1976. And I'm here to talk to you about the differences in leading men and women. Um, honestly, uh, uh, this is an area that I learned by making one mistake after another. When I was hired at North Carolina in 1976, I was hired to coach the men. Uh, it was a part-time position. The guy I played for here at UNC, Dr. Marvin Allen, was a part-time coach. He lectured in our physical education department here, and he coached uh, the soccer team uh, on the side. When I took his position, I took his part-time position. Uh, and then three years later, uh, the athletic director at UNC, uh, Bill Kobe, decided he wanted to start a women's varsity and asked me if I would coach it. And I told him I would, and he made this part-time position full-time. So honestly, I came directly from the men's game. Uh, I had nothing in my background that prepared me for coaching women. I went to a boys' boarding school for my high school education. The closest I came to a woman in those days when I had the leading female role in the school play my senior year. So I had nothing in my background that prepared me for this, this women's team. When I went to UNC, uh, the predominant population on campus back when I was in school was male. And so I wasn't really that comfortable when I was given this women's team for the first time. Uh, the feminist literature, fortunately, in the early 70s was telling all of us that there were no differences between men and women, only environmental influences that pushed us in different directions, and that was great. That was great news for me. So I was going to take this platform and I was going to train my men and women exactly the same. I would develop one game plan in practice for both teams and basically implement it, and I was thinking, this is fantastic. So this, I would cut my workload in half by basically duplicating everything between the men and women, and all of a sudden, one mistake after another uh, in training and developing teams. And I could obviously uh, uh, speak all day about all my different mistakes, but ultimately it, it came down to this. Uh, there's a different leadership platform when you're leading men and you're leading women, certainly in my experience in athletics. One of the big issues in developing and leading my women's team was a tremendous lack of confidence that they all seemed to have, even the ones that were extraordinary. So part of my job was to try to build this confidence in every practice and before every game, and I had to use that platform as my driver to try to get these people to their potential. The men were the exact opposite. The biggest issue in coaching the men was hubris. Every male athlete thought he was God's gift to athletics. Uh, and then my job as a coach was to share them, well, no, no, there are some things you've got to work on to develop. And so there was this battle between trying to get men down off their platform of overconfidence and get women up from their platform of lack of confidence. And so this evolution of me learning to try to, I guess, in a way, um, encourage or if you will, manipulate my teams to go in the direction to get to their potential uh, was absolutely critical. It's really interesting, if you're coaching men, if you make a general criticism of a men's team, every guy in the room is nodding because he thinks you're talking about the guy next to him. In fact, what's amazing, you've got to use videotape in training and developing your elite men's teams because they've never felt they've made a mistake in athletic competition in their lives. And videotape is proof. Well. If we use that videotape footage for our women's team, we would be shattering confidences one after another, and it just didn't have a positive impact for them. So now, when we use videotape for the women, all we do is show highlight reels. In fact, Chris Dukar, who does this for me before every single game, takes footage from the last game and just shows our women how extraordinary they were in the last game. So this different leadership dy dynamic is critical when you're trying to take your men's team and your women's team to their potential. One of the things that's critical if you're going to coach men or coach a men's athletic team is to have the strength so the players will respond to that quality in your personality. If you look at uh, a men's basketball game, in fact, March Madness, all of us are fans of March Madness, they've always seemed to have a camera on the coaches as well as on the floor. And if you look at these coaches, I mean, they are screaming at something the entire game, either at one of their athletes or at the referee. And trust me, if this aggressive male posturing didn't work as a leadership platform for their men's teams, they wouldn't be doing it. And yet in the women's game, if that's your posture, all you're going to do by getting up and burying them for mistakes or demanding they play at a higher level is you're going to shatter their confidence. And what's vital in this relationship between you as a coach and your players on the women's side is to have some connection.
They have to feel you believe in them, and they also have to feel that you've got a unique relationship with them, and it's that relationship, that relationship of trust, that puts you in a position to basically drive and take uh, extraordinary young women to their athletic potential. And this is something I learned, again, by making one mistake after another through my coaching career in this adjustment from coaching men to coaching both, and then certainly uh, since 1988, just coaching the women. And so what I would advise anyone that's trying to do both or trying to make this transfer from coaching men to coaching women is to appreciate there is a different leadership dynamic. And a lot of us are, I think, incredibly talented leaders, and the transition for many is going to be a smooth one because your instinct in coaching one group or the other is going to come from you naturally. Just like through the course of leading a team, everyone is different from everyone else. Every player requires a different leadership dynamic, and so I think for a lot of people, the transition from one team to the other will also be relatively easy because I think your instincts will tell you how you're going to basically run and drive people to their potential. I had a clunkier route into my uh, coaching platform, and it was honestly only through making one series of mistakes after another that I finally learned that was most, what was most effective for me. And so in your evolution, as you're going from coaching one gender to the other, uh, trust me, there are going to be some bumps along the way, uh, but the rewards are extraordinary. The cliches we use in trying to take uh, these young people to their potential is uh, what's vital uh, it, with the men is actually to drive them. You can drive them with the intensity of your own personality. That's effective. Getting up in a men's game and driving them the way you see in a men's basketball game, I think works with the men. Because what they're responding to is your strength. Getting up and trying to have that kind of personality on the sideline for a women's team is not as effective. What they get a sense of if you're up I guess driving them is that you're upset with their performance and that doesn't have as positive effect on their confidence as you think it might. Uh, certainly the translation from the men and the women in this environment is going to be a bit of a challenge. And so what I'm going to recommend all of you consider in the transition between coaching men to coaching women, coaching men to coaching men and women both at the same time is the fact that uh, uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, and again, people like me that didn't have the natural ability to transfer themselves from coaching one group to another, I think will benefit from appreciating there are some differences and you've got to be careful about how you're going to try to lead and coach both.